Well, good morning. Thank you very much for being here. I'm State Senator Joe Simidian, and I am the author of Senate Bill 173. And let me begin by sharing with you how we came to be in this room today talking about this particular subject. Some of you know that uh, every year I have a contest called There Ought to Be a Law, and I invite my constituents to suggest to me legislation they think would be good for the state of California. One of my constituents, a woman named Amy Colton, entered the Ought to Be a Law contest, and she had, I thought, a very compelling story, and Amy's with us here today. She said, here's my story. I'm a nurse, I eat healthy, I exercise regularly, I have no history of cancer in my family, I, of course, go for my annual mammograms, and I give myself regular self-examinations. And after all of that, I discovered one day that I had cancer. And after the operation, she said, how is it possible that year after year, seven years in a row, I went for a mammogram, got a good result, got a happy gram in the mail, and then discovered that I had cancer? And the answer she was given is, well, you have dense breast tissue to which she replied, what is that? And the answer was, well, dense breast tissue is just what it sounds like. And the reason it's important is that it reads white on a mammogram, just like an abnormality or a cancer would read white on a mammogram. And so if you're one of the 40% of the women who show up for a mammogram who has dense breast tissue, it's entirely possible that whatever is there can't be seen. And therein lies the beginning of today's story. So she said to me, how is it that my radiologist knows I have dense breast tissue and that that obscures a possible cancer? The radiologist, under federal law, sends a report to my referring physician that tells him or her that I have dense breast tissue, which could obscure an abnormality. I get a letter in the mail telling me that, good news, your mammogram doesn't show us anything. But the only person in the conversation who hasn't been told about dense breast tissue and the fact that it could obscure an abnormality, a cancer, is the patient. And that's the basis for the bill. Those of you who cover the Capitol know it's fairly common for authors to say this is a simple bill. This is a simple bill. This is a bill that says if you're one of those 40%, if you're a woman with dense breast tissue, when you've had a mammogram, when you get that letter in the mail that's going to come anyway, you should be told that you have dense breast tissue, that it could possibly obscure an abnormality if one is there, and that you may want to talk to your referring physician about it. That's the whole bill. I'm going to characterize the bill in the shortest, simplest way I can. We're talking today about a two-sentence notice, two sentences that can save thousands of lives. All we have to do here in the California State Legislature is approve the measure, make sure that women who have dense breast tissue Get that two-sentence notice, and with just two sentences, we can save thousands of lives. I want to turn now to Dr. Nancy Capello, PhD, who's uh, come all the way from Connecticut, where this law is already on the books, and we're delighted to have her here. She is the founder of a national organization called Are You Dense? And she's going to tell you a little bit of both about her personal experience as well as about the Are You Dense effort. Doctor? Thank you. Thank you, Senator Simidian. Thank you, residents of California. I bring greetings from the great state of Connecticut. I was a faithful and, I thought, educated patient. I exercised daily, ate healthy, had no first-degree relatives with breast cancer, and had a decade of normal mammograms. In 2004, two months after my normal mammography report, I was diagnosed with an advanced stage breast cancer, which was found by my physician during a routine clinical exam. The pathology report revealed a two and a half centimeter, which is an inch tumor, which had metastasized to 13 lymph nodes. A normal mammogram weeks before. Is that early detection? I was shocked, confused, and asked my breast surgeon why my cancer was found so late. After all, I had normal mammograms. And she told me that I have dense breast tissue. And that was the first time that I heard those terms, dense breast tissue with an advanced 
stage cancer. I was not formed about my own health hazard and my own risk factor until after an advanced cancer. I asked her why I was never told, and she told me that it's not the standard protocol. Her response was not good enough for me, a faithful patient with an advanced cancer facing seven surgeries, chemotherapy, radiation, aggressive treatment continues, and a greater likelihood of dying early from this disease and having a recurrence. So I started searching in 2004 women's lay journals, found nothing about dense breast tissue. I call it the best kept secret. There was nothing from the American Cancer Society, nothing from the Coleman Foundation, until I searched peer-reviewed journals and I found at the time six major studies with over 38,000 women that demonstrated that breast density is the number one predictor of the failure of mammography to find cancer. And I was never told about this. I had less than a 25% chance of having my cancer found by mammography alone. So I asked this question, how many women are out there like me, receiving their happy gram and have a hidden intruder stealing their life? I made a promise to do what the medical community never told me to do, and that is to expose the secret of dense breast tissue. I worked with Senator Joe Crisco in the Connecticut legislature, and since 2005 we passed two bills, one for insurance coverage, and in 2009 the first state in the nation to inform women of their breast density when they have their mammogram. I started a nonprofit organization called Are You Dense? And from that organization and our website, I found women like Amy and other women across the state who have similar stories as mine, finding out about their dense breast tissue after they received an advanced stage cancer. Harris survey found in May of 2010 that only one out of 10 women are aware of their dense breast tissue. Find that out from their physician. That is why we do this work. Why do we have to find this out when our own doctor and our own radiologist knows this information? So I pledged again to make sure that every woman knows the answer to this question. Are you dense? Because I know this is a personal issue and knowing your breast density is a matter of life. Thank you very much. We're going to hear now from Dr. Judy Dean, a California radiologist who has personal experience with this particular phenomenon and I think perhaps most importantly for our conversation today can share with you some success stories and prove that right here in California the kind of notice we're talking about is already saving lives and has the potential to do much more. Dr. Dean? Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Senator Smidian. My name is Dr. Judy Dean, and I am a radiologist, a diagnostic radiologist from Santa Barbara, California. Because uh, I am an imager, I want to share some pictures with you today. I'll switch closer to you there. There you have it. Um, the mammogram that you see is that of one of my patients, a 54-year-old woman, and she didn't know it when she had this picture, but she had breast cancer. We would classify her as a BI-RADS density 2. You see your little chart there. She has only a few strands of white density left. So, because she has a, a clear, fatty background on her mammogram, we can easily see that she has a problem right there, a little white cancer. This mammogram led to her having a biopsy. That was a seven millimeter invasive breast cancer. In contrast, the second mammogram I'll show you is from another of my patients, a 44-year-old woman, and she also has breast cancer, but it cannot be visualized on her mammogram. She has extremely dense background tissue. We would classify her as a BIRADS density four. This is the terminology that is used to report density. It's standard nationwide. Now, please let me clarify at this juncture 
that I am not saying mammography is a problem. Mammography has saved thousands of lives, even in many women with dense breasts. The problem is that mammography alone is not enough for women with dense breast tissue. Women with extremely dense breast tissue have an 18 times higher risk of their cancer being missed by mammography. So mammography alone is not enough. Now the woman on the left, because of her density, underwent an ultrasound, which did reveal a small cancer. And this is the picture after her biopsy with a little marker clip in place where the biopsy was done. I think you'll agree that there is no way that you would see a small little white dot like this on this completely white background. There's just no way that you'll see it. Since 2005, I have been notifying my patients that have increased breast density with their mammography results letters. And this has resulted in many women choosing to have automated breast ultrasound. It did not cause confusion or undue anxiety. It has caused a healthy discussion between patients and their physicians and radiologists. The decision whether additional screening is indicated after mammography involves both breast density and the individual patient's breast cancer risk. Both patients and physicians need to participate in that discussion. And for them both to participate in the discussion, they both have to be informed about breast density and its relationship to breast cancer. As radiologists, we are continuing to evolve our knowledge about which patients should have more than a routine mammogram and what, if any, additional imaging should be done. The fact that we do not have a one-size-fits-all solution at this moment does not change the fact that we have a problem. And the problem is that mammography alone does not do a good enough job in women with dense breast tissue. This bill offers the beginning of a solution to that problem. We have the opportunity to save lives at no cost. Notification about breast density will save lives. In my own small practice in Santa Barbara, over 30 women have been diagnosed with potentially deadly invasive breast cancers because I notify patients. Information is power, and this is information that women need to make informed choices about their health. Digital mammography is now easily accessible in California, but did you know that digital has been shown to be superior for women with dense breast tissue? If we continue to withhold breast density information from patients, they won't know to ask for this technology, which is actually widely available. At a minimum, women with dense breast tissue should be informed that they need digital mammography instead of the older film analog mammography. And in consultation with their healthcare providers, uh, they can discuss whether additional testing is indicated depending on their individual risk factors. Having a false negative mammogram is actually worse than not having a mammogram at all. Why is that? It results in delayed diagnosis. When a woman feels a lump in her breast and she's just been told, your mammogram is normal, you have nothing to worry about, she may dismiss it and do nothing about it. Nobody wants this disease. If on the other hand, she's just been advised that her mammogram shows dense breast tissue and an abnormality could easily be obscured, she is far more likely to react appropriately and seek immediate medical attention. Breast cancers detected early have the best chance for cure and require the least treatment. The personal and societal costs in pain, money, suffering, grief of a late diagnosis of breast cancer cannot be overstated, and this is the reason that we should notify. This bill will not result in any additional costs, either to physicians, to patients, or to the healthcare system. All that needs to happen is the information that is already reported to physicians by radiologists in mammography reports about breast density needs to then be included in the letters that are already required to be sent to every patient after every mammogram. This is an opportunity to save lives at no cost. It's really that simple. Thank you for your time.
Thank you, Dr. Judy Dean, and thank you, Dr. Nancy Capello. Once again, I just want to make the observation. Two sentences can save thousands of lives. That's what this conversation is about today. As you just heard from Dr. Dean, we're not asking for any new information to be collected. The information is already, <coughs> the information about dense breast tissue is already being assessed by the radiologist and under federal law shared with the referring physician. So what we're not doing is asking for any new information to be collected. We're not even asking for any new letter to be sent. There's not even an additional postage stamp involved because under federal law, there's already a lay letter that goes from the radiologist to the patient. So again, what are we asking? We're asking for two sentences. Two sentences that can save thousands of lives if women with dense breast tissue are informed of the fact that they have dense breast tissue and that an abnormality, a cancer, could be hidden. That's what the bill does. Now, I want to share with you just a couple of the quotations that are in the packet that we've distributed. And if you haven't got a copy, Melissa Figueroa from my office would be happy to share one. Quote, the main cause of false negative results in screaming mammograms is high breast density, end quote. That's from the National Cancer Institute fact sheet on mammograms. Quote, since the 1970s, radiologists have known that the density of a woman's breast is an important predictor of breast cancer. The disease is four to six times more likely in women with dense breast tissue than in women whose breasts consist almost entirely of fat. End quote, LA Times reporting on studies available, including the cancer epidemiology biomarker study from 2006. And finally, quote, if a woman has dense breasts, she should talk with her doctor about breast cancer risk factors and about the benefits and risks associated with a screening ultrasound. End quote. That's the suggestion of the American College of Radiology, but it raises the obvious question. How can a woman know she should have that conversation if no one has told her she has dense breast tissue that could obscure a cancer? That's the bill. I want to thank Amy Colton for being here. I know she's available for questions as well. I want to thank our two guests who've come from Santa Barbara and from Connecticut. We're happy to take any questions, and we look forward to saving lives. The other point I want to make before we go to questions is, when we have this discussion, people get it. And that's why we've had the press conference today. We had a vigorous debate in the Senate Health Committee, went on for probably an hour, and ultimately eight of the nine members on a bipartisan basis voted for the bill when it hit the floor. We had a vigorous debate on the floor of the Senate. And on the floor of the Senate, on a bipartisan 34 to 5 vote, the measure was passed. 10 of 15 Republicans joining Democratic members, putting party aside to do the right thing for women's health. My hope is that we'll have the same good result in the State Assembly and that ultimately the bill will end up on the Governor's desk for a signature. Why don't I ask you all to join me, women, if you would, and let's take questions, if any. Well, if the debate took that long, what was the confusion or what was the opposition? Well, we've got some of the folks who opposed the bill here in the room with us today, and I would encourage you to uh, talk to them afterwards You get their point of view, and we're delighted that they're here. Um, unfortunately, the argument sort of changed over time. One of the debates we heard was about uh, whether or not we were getting in the way of the patient's relationship with the doctor. And as you heard from the doctor and from these other uh, spokesmen as well, what we're talking about is trying to encourage the relationship between the patient and the doctor to make sure that the patient and the doctor have this conversation where it's appropriate. Why don't I ask Dr. Nancy Fellow to step up if you have a, a comment on this? No, issue? no, I just wanted to. All right, well, let's get let's get let's get, let's get, let's get let's get everybody to, get everybody close. Uh, the other there were, then there was a question about whether or not this would put an undue burden on physicians because they would in fact have to interact with their patients, uh, and that argument was not particularly persuasive either in committee or on the floor. Questions of liability were raised, which I thought were interesting questions because if liability exists, it exists right now. When the radiologist knows that there's dense breast tissue, but doesn't tell the patient. When the referring physician knows that there's dense breast tissue, but doesn't tell the patient, you can understand how a patient who develops cancer might say, wait a minute, I haven't been treated properly in this case. In this instance, what we're talking about is making sure that that liability is to the greatest possible degree eliminated because all of the information is shared with the patient herself and if anything, that should reduce liability, not increase liability. Certainly the experience in Connecticut over these past two years has not been one that suggests that there have been liability concerns there. And in fact, in Connecticut, the radiologists supported the notice bill in 2009 because they had experience going back to 2005, as you heard from Dr. Capello, 
with this issue and over time came to understand, as Dr. Dean has described, that this can really be a lifesaver for their patients. And then finally, we were helped, frankly, in this debate when one of my colleagues leaned forward and said, well, she didn't understand what the concern was because her physician, who's part of the Sutter Group apparently, provides her with this information and they had obviously concluded that liability wasn't an issue. So all of those issues got raised and then, of course, there was the issue of cost. Well, there is no additional cost in terms of assessing dense breast tissue because dense breast tissue is already assessed under federal law. There is no even postage stamp cost because the report's already going to the patient. So then the question was, would people be looking for tests that they didn't really need? Wanted to point out that the cost of an ultrasound that we reimburse, at least in the state of California for Medi-Cal, is about $49.95. Putting aside the human cost, the dollar cost of dealing with an advanced stage cancer is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we know that if you catch it early, the treatment cost is probably a fraction, 13 times more expensive to deal with this later on. So the cost arguments, it seems to me, run pretty clearly in favor of the bill. Prevention is the key not only to saving lives but to reducing costs. And so that argument wasn't particularly persuasive as well. All these arguments were raised in both the committee and on the floor, and as I say, ultimately, uh, we got a 34 to 5 vote, but we still have opposition, which is why we're continuing to pursue the issue and having the conference today. So can I follow up on that just, just to understand? I mean, um, one of the concerns raised by some of those who have registered as opposition is that, and, and certainly the experts here can talk about this, develop their view first, is that the science isn't 100% clear. And so are you, are you, that, that the notification is not a problem, but are you raising questions in the minds of some women that can't be answered by the notification of tissue, you know, that they have that kind of tissue. Here's where the science is absolutely clear, and I think all three of these women can tell you that the science is clear. And we've got materials in the packet that I encourage you to look at as well. The science is absolutely clear about what you just heard and saw. The science is absolutely clear that 40% of the women who walk through the door for a mammogram have dense breast tissue. The science is absolutely clear that when you have dense breast tissue, a conventional mammogram reads white and obscures an abnormality or cancer. And the science is absolutely clear that a significant number of cancers, probably 50 to 75 percent of the cancer that is there, is missed by a conventional mammogram. There is no argument about that. Now, where there's a little bit more debate is, is around the fact that the fact that a woman has dense breast tissue is indicative of a greater risk of cancer, which is the great irony of this debate, because the very women who most need to be put on alert are the women who are getting less information rather than more. As you heard earlier, it's not just that the report is incomplete, it is misleading because it suggests that you've gotten a healthy report rather than acknowledging that there are limitations to the technology that was used for these particular women. So there may be a debate about whether women with dense breast tissue are three to six times more likely to have cancer or two to six times more likely to have cancer or five times more likely to have cancer. But we frankly have not even made that case in the debate. You didn't hear me reference it. I'll let people argue. There is no debate about the fact that women with dense breast tissue are more likely to have cancer. But I'll put that aside. There's absolutely no debate about the limitations of a ma mammogram for women with dense breast tissue and the fact that the conversation should take place. Now, the question also raised the concern about whether or not we would perhaps unduly alarm patients. So I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Uh, Dean to speak to that and any others who wish to. But I want to read the two sentences that we have suggested be in the notice. Quote, because your mammogram demonstrates that you have dense breast tissue, which could hide small abnormalities, you might benefit from supplementary screening tests depending on your individual risk factors. A report of your mammography results, which contains information about your breast density, has been sent to your physician's office, and you should contact your physician if you have any questions or concerns about this report. Matter of fact, straightforward, the kind of thing that will prompt a woman like Amy to say, I wonder if there's anything else I should be doing. And that is the question that we hope to prompt and that we think will save lives. Dr. Dean, you want to talk briefly just about yes. your experience? Yes. We have had a very good experience with notification of patients, which we've been doing for um, quite a few years now. In fact, when I called uh, one of my referring physicians the other day and told her I was going to be out of town for this, she said, what, you mean that's not standard? She's so used to seeing it 
in the reports and in the patient letters that I do. She was kind of horrified that this wasn't the standard of care. Um, my pathologist, I spoke with him, he said, there's no question that this will save lives. The surgeon that I work with frequently said he doesn't understand why the societies aren't promoting this and requiring it. It, it really is that straightforward and that simple. Where it gets a little muddier, as I think you alluded to, is what do you do next? Okay, you've had a mammogram, you have dense breast tissue. Let's say you also have a family history of breast cancer. So now we're talking pretty elevated risk. There are actually American Cancer Society guidelines that uh, recommend an annual MRI if your lifetime risk of breast cancer exceeds 20%. And quite a few women that have dense breast tissue will fall into that category. Then there's another whole group of women who may have mildly elevated risk and or just dense breast tissue but no other risk factors. For them, there are several things that can be done. Right out of the blocks, you know that if you ever feel a breast lump, you must address it. You cannot rely on the mammogram to have found every single abnormality. So that's number one and probably most important. Number two, you should be asking for digital mammography, not film mammography. Beyond that, you can discuss with your doctor whether there is additional imaging that would be appropriate for you. There are now numerous published studies about using ultrasound to find cancer in women with dense breast tissue. They started out many years ago with just handheld ultrasound. They've now progressed to some newer devices that are automated for doing ultrasound of the entire breast. One of those is actually uh, in application now with the FDA for approval as a screening device. So yes, this is an evolving area of technology. I personally think that additional testing should be done on other modalities, maybe even thermography. I mean, there are other things that we should look at. We shouldn't put all the eggs in the one basket of mammography that we know is very, very leaky when it comes to women with dense breast tissue. It just doesn't work all that well. It's time to stop withholding that information. Other questions? If not, then I will say thank you to all of you who are here today. Uh, all of these women are available to uh, take uh, questions immediately uh, after we wrap up here. Copies of the packet are available from my staff who's here as well. And the one other thing I want to be sure to do before we wrap up is thank my two co-authors, uh, Senator Elaine Alquist and Senator Sharon Runner, both of whom are co-authors on the bill and who have been kind enough to lend their support along the way. Uh, once again, my thanks. And again, I'm going to close with the uh, same exhortation, two sentences and we can save thousands of lives. That's why we're here today. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.